Good morning and welcome to Micro Moment Monday and happy 4th of July for those of us that live in the United States. Uh, today we're going to talk about something that I've had a couple of questions on recently and that is how do we know how much water to use when we are rehydrating or reconstituting dried foods? And those two words are not synonymous. So that's what this video is about. We're going to talk about the difference between rehydrating and reconstituting. Um, I know that many of you would just like a list of here's how much dried food you need and here's how much water you need to make a perfect outcome. And what I have discovered with my experience is that even though especially in my freeze dryer, I have weighed food before and after to find out the weight of the water that was um, sublimated out of all of the cells in the food and try to put that exact same amount of water back in according to percentages. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. And so what I'm wanting to do today is to go through a technique that we can use for dried foods that will give us success and we can just forget about any kind of a list that tells us how much water to use with what. There is one exception to that and I'll show you that in a minute. So I have laid out a lot of foods freeze dried as well as dehydrated and we're going to go through them and talk about which ones are best for rehydrating and what that means and which ones are best for reconstituting and what that means. So rehydrating means to um, add water to it so that it regains its original volume, let's say. It won't always regain its original texture, regardless of whether we have freeze dried it or dehydrated. Some do, but some don't. But rehydrating is to put the water back in and just let it grab as much as it needs. On the other hand, reconstituting is a different type of thing. We need to use a measured amount of water to bring the food back to the same consistency that it was prior to the drying process, whether it was freeze drying or dehydrating. So we're going to run through these. I think you'll get a better idea as we talk about them. So we're going to go pretty fast. This one is very familiar to us because I've talked about it a lot. This is freeze dried or if you have dehydrated eggs. These are powdered eggs. So do we want to rehydrate them or reconstitute them? And we want to reconstitute them to use a measured amount of water. Now this is the one that I do know what the measured amount of water is in most cases. And um, people have different ideas about this and if I disagree with what you do then you keep doing what you do if it is successful. On the commercial cans of powdered eggs which are now about a hundred dollars a piece for a number 10 can, I can't believe it. It wasn't too long ago that John and Cindy and Jim and I were shopping in Winco and I picked up a couple of number 10 cans of powdered eggs for $23. So they have quadrupled in price in just a very few months. So what they say on the back of their instruction, on the back of the can for their instructions is two tablespoons of egg powder to two tablespoons of water equals one egg. And I find that to be pretty accurate. Sometimes I might need to adjust the water up just a little bit, but that's a measured amount of water to get the eggs back to being eggs like raw eggs again. The same thing is true with sour cream. We don't want to just dump a bunch of water in there and hope that we get the right thing. We want to do it in a very measured way. In fact, I think I want to just quickly demonstrate sour cream. So, here is some more sour cream, one that I'm just about out of. If my recipe calls for a fourth of a cup of sour cream, then I'm going to put a fourth of a cup of powder in here, which is four tablespoons of the powder. I don't know how much water this is going to take, but I do know that I want it thick like regular sour cream. So I'm not going to do a one-to-one -one because that would make it too runny. So I'm just going to start with one tablespoon of water and I'm going to stir that in and see what we get. So starting small and adding more as needed is the way to go when we are 
reconstituting, re constituting. Thank you. <laughs> when we are reconstituting food. So I need another tablespoon. All right, it absorbed that really quickly, but look, I'm getting kind of close here. Maybe one more tablespoon. Okay, so this is going to be just about right for sour cream. So that was three tablespoons of water to four tablespoons. Oh yeah, perfect, perfect. So I started small and I built up. And then I keep a little log book just for reference. So I would write down sour cream, four powder to three water. And that is parts, whether it's tablespoons or cups or whatever. So that's what we have for sour cream. Ooh, that reconstituted really well. So this jar holds guacamole chunks. This is full made guacamole that is freeze dried. So do you think I want to reconstitute or rehydrate? Can I just float it in as much water as I want to just dump the water in? No, this is another one where I would want to go slowly, starting with a little bit of water to reconstitute it to its original consistency. These are ice cream bites. These are freeze dried ice cream bites. So do I want to rehydrate? Or reconstitute? Neither. <laughs> Not with ice cream. What I want to do is eat this. This is the way to eat ice cream bites. Don't do either. Don't put any more water in or you will have a big mess. Okay, next row we have two jars of potatoes. These are mashed potatoes. These are Hash browns. I never can remember the name of that. These are hash browns, but they're both potatoes. Wouldn't you think I could do the same thing? Think about what we want as the outcome. These would take a measured amount of water, so we're going to reconstitute these. On the other hand, I just want to get these back to normal, and I can pour off any extra water, and then I can fry them up as hash browns. So these would be uh, rehydrated, and with any amount of water that we want, pour them in a bowl, dump some water in, wait till they get back to normal, drain off the extra water, and you're done. But with mashed potatoes, I would want to start with a measured amount of water in a pan. And maybe that measured amount of water, if I'm fixing mashed potatoes for Jim and me, might be two cups. So I would bring that two cups of water to a boil, or at least heat it, and start dropping in chunks wait till they um, dissolve in that water and keep adding the potatoes until I got to the right consistency. So that's how we would do that. Freeze dried raspberries. Depending on a recipe, I might wanna leave them dry. Yesterday I made muffins and I took some of these freeze dried raspberries and I crushed them and put them in those muffins. Uh, sometimes we might want to rehydrate them. And if that's the case, I pour some in a bowl and just an amount of water, not a measured amount. Same thing with kiwi. I eat this dry or we can reconstitute it. These are blueberries. Uh, these are freeze dried. And um, so what would I do with these? You can eat them like snacks, just plain dry. Or if I want to use them in a recipe, I might throw them in dry, like with oatmeal in, in the morning and just let them rehydrate as I'm cooking the oatmeal. Um, or I could just put them in a bowl with an unmeasured amount of water and let them come back to their um, squishy selves and use them in a recipe if it called for that. This should be very familiar to you. Do you think I need to do some more of the... This is my um, tricolor peppers. These are freeze-dried and these, this is just rehydrating in a bowl of unmeasured amount of water. Use these a lot. This entire row is all dehydrated. Dehydrated broccoli and corn. Mixed vegetables. This is uh, green onions. 
and mushrooms. I'm not going to want to reconstitute any of these. These are all for rehydrating. Put them in a bowl with an unmeasured amount of water and then just drain off any extra water. Now, the trick with this is that the, the rehydrating times vary. Um, ordinarily, freeze-dried foods rehydrate much more quickly than do dehydrated foods. So take that into consideration. I'm not saying that one is better than the other, they're just different. But you have to figure that out as you go. It takes dehydrated foods that have been, the cells are all collapsed down. And so not only do they have to get soft again, but they have to suck in that water. And it takes a little bit of time for that water to come back into those cells. So allow some time for that. Okay, now for meats. These are carnitas. These are flaked. This is flaked pork that has been seasoned and cooked from a pork shoulder with some delicious seasoning. Now, I don't want to dilute that lovely flavor. Now, these would be rehydrated, not reconstituted, but rehydrated. I could put them in a bowl of water and pour off any extra water afterward. But I don't want to do that because I don't want to lose any of the flavor that might seep out of the meat in the rehydration process. So first, I can the broth that is the result of cooking this in the first place. Or I could also freeze dry it and use the broth that way as well. But I want to rehydrate this in broth. And while I'm not reconstituting, I do want to keep the amount of liquid so that I don't have to pour anything off, so all the flavor is, is still there. So I would heat up the amount of broth that I'm wanting about the amount, and then I would start putting these uh, flakes of meat in until I get enough into the right consistency, even if I would have to add a little bit more broth. These tough little guys are meatballs. Now, it takes a long time to rehydrate these meatballs I'm finding. So I start them in the refrigerator in a quart jar of water overnight. I want the meatballs to be submerged and the darn things just float. And while water will seep up, I want them surrounded with water. So I will put them in either a pint jar, depending on how many I'm going to use, or a quart jar and fill it all the way to the top and put the lid on. I mean, I put water all the way to the top, no headspace, so that every one of those meatballs is submerged in the water and I just stick it in the refrigerator overnight. And by morning, they are ready to go. So here is um, stew. So what do you think? Are we reconstituting or are we rehydrating? Well, it's not like a powder. Most powders are what we reconstitute. This stew, we want to get it wet again. We want to rehydrate it. But again, we want to be careful on the amount of water that we are using so we don't make the stew too runny. So once again, and if you're going to be doing this in serving sizes in mylar bags, you're going to want to know how much boiling water to pour in relative to how much of this that you have put in. Now, when we did our video on this, I had measured that out and told you exactly the amount of water that I would be using. But then, once again, it didn't work and it was too much water. So experiment and start with a little bit of water and get it to the right consistency by adding a little at a time and then write it in your logbook so that you will know. When John and Cindy, my sister and brother-in-law, were here a week ago, uh, they brought us a case of avocados. <laughs> <laughs> so I spent a lot of days freeze drying avocados and at our next trip up uh, to where they live, I'm going to be uh, giving this bag to them. Now with avocados, uh, we can rehydrate them and once again it takes a long time to do avocados. It takes about an hour. Um, even though they are freeze dried, they are a little longer to rehydrate. <clears throat> these are hot Italian sausage raw and these are so good but once again these are meat and it is raw meat so I stick these in a bowl of water in the refrigerator overnight let them rehydrate and they are ready to fry up in the morning for breakfast 
I hope that this has helped. I hope that you now understand the difference between reconstituting like most powders and mashed potatoes and then rehydrating. And that sometimes even rehydrating, you need to use a measured amount of water so you don't get things too runny. So thank you for being with us for this really quick Micro Moment Monday. And we will see you at our next video.